Hi guys, so this is something a bit different. I hope you find it interesting. So if you've watched Mr. Robots, you'll remember the scene where Romero's house gets raided. The FBI find his computer and start plugging things into it, trying to download data, presumably, until it catches fire and destroys all the evidence. So I wanted to make something a bit similar. So this is part one of the SD SSD, or rather self-destructing SSD build log. So instead of destroying the whole computer, we're just going to be destroying an SSD, as that's where all the important stuff is stored after all. I bought these cheapo 32 gigabyte SSDs from eBay to use in this project. Next, there's the whole fire thing. You've got iron oxide and aluminium powder. The chemists among you will probably see where this is going. While harmless by themselves, when mixed together with the right proportions, you get this, thermite. Again, harmless. Well, until you introduce a flame hot enough to melt some of the aluminium, at which point a small exothermic reaction ensues, burning at over 2000 degrees Celsius. I should take a moment to state the obvious. Don't do this at home. I've researched this, so I know what I'm doing, kind of. I only used a couple of grams of thermite here, not enough at all to raise the temperature of a container by what's needed to melt it. So the general idea is to surround the SSD in this stuff ready for ignition on command. This 32 gigabyte SSD has four eight gigabyte chips, so all of those chips will need to be destroyed. Since this is going to be taking up a decent amount of space inside of a computer, I'm going to be hiding it inside an optical drive that I've hollowed out. Optical drives and SSDs use exactly the same connectors, one for power, one for data. So it shouldn't really be obvious that there's an SSD inside of this thing. So how this works out in practice is that the SSD along with the thermite is fixed here. When the self-destruct sequence is initiated, a server will turn, pulling on a piece of string which will be hot glued to the button pressy thing of a jet lighter, igniting the thermite, wrecking the SSD. All this will be done by an Arduino, more specifically a barebones Arduino, one that I'll be building myself with actual 80 mega 328p chips soldered onto a circuit board. It's essentially the same thing as an Arduino, it just looks a lot cooler, it's more compact and it will consume a lot less battery power than a full-on Arduino Uno. So replacing batteries regularly on your self-destructing SSD will become a thing of the past. Right guys, so for the rest of this video, I'm not going to be really prototyping it, but I'm just going to be checking that each component works and showing you my general kind of uh, thought process behind putting this uh, whole thing together. And in the next episode, I'm going to solder it and get the software, the, um, the sketch that I'm going to be using on this fully working. Um, it's a bit rambly at times, this next bit. I, it could have turned out better. Some bits I've dubbed over, other bits I'm just talking as I'm doing it. So if you don't want to put up with it, that's fine. Just make sure you check out the next build log. So I'll make sure that everything's a lot more succinct and to the point. So yeah, stick around if you want to. And if you don't, don't. So this is, um, well, this is a normal Arduino and the chips they use are 80 mega 328Ps. So it's essentially the same chip from an Arduino, but I'm putting it on a breadboard so we don't have all this other stuff around it, which we don't really need in the first place. So I'm going to just put that down there. Okay. It has VCC, which is uh, voltage. Is that pin seven? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's positive. And negative is ground. It's ground. So if I hook that up to ground, and then there's positive, which is two down. So I'll put that in there. So this is just providing power to the board. And next, there's I'm going to be using a 10 nanofarad, I think it's nanofarad, not microfarad, UF, whatever the U stands for, uh, capacitor to essentially smooth out the current. I think, I think my electronics is right on that one. So I'll just pop that in there between um, positive and negative. So next, what you have to remember for these things is that they don't run on a very large voltage. And for this in particular, usually, say on a normal Arduino, you have uh, a crystal, which makes sure it runs at 60 megahertz. However, with this one, I'm going to be running it on the internal oscillator, which is going to run at eight megahertz, so I don't need a crystal. However, I'm going to be running it at much lower voltages than I might otherwise do. So to make sure I get those low voltages, especially when I'm running on battery, is I'm going to be using a voltage regulator so this is going to take, um, a, I can't remember what the maximum rate is, but because we're using a servo and this, this is only going to be using 3.3 volts, whereas the servo we're going to be using is going to be using something like 7.5, because
because they just have different power requirements. So this is going to take the 7.5 voltage that we're using for this and convert it down to a much lower voltage that we, we will be able to use for the chip. So I'll just put that in over here. I'm going to have to check the pin out for this because I cannot remember. Let's say, um, let's run, let's say the input is going to be on here, on this row. So I'm going to have inputs going to here because I'm going to connect up the battery terminals, positive here and negative here. Input output, so for output, that's going to be going to the positive rail on this side. And ground, of course, is going to be going to the negative rail. Input output ground. I need to make sure I get this right so I don't blow anything up. So I'm going to be using a pull up resistor. So this is going to make sure that our thing doesn't reset itself and it's just going to keep that constant, which is what we want. So that's going to be on the positive rail here. And it's a 10k ohm resistor. So negative is going to go from here to here. And I know this maybe isn't making sense. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying my best. <laughs> Okay, so um, let me just explain what we've done so far. The chip is going to be running on 3.3 volts. So we're taking a much bigger voltage uh, from our input, from our battery pack, which is probably running at 7.5. And that's going to be on the positive. That's going to input power to the positive and the negative. So the, the positive is going to run to the voltage regulator. And then it's going to reduce the voltage to approximately 3.3 volts. So and then it's going to power this rail here with 3.3 volts. So everything on here is running at 3.3. So then we've got the uh, capacitor, which is uh, just going to smooth down things a little. And then we've got these two. We've got positive and negative, and then another positive and negative. Um, that's powering the microchip. And then the pull-up resistor just to make sure it doesn't reset itself. Okay. So in order to test this test that this setup does actually work. I am going to be programming it. I'm going to be taking this chip out and programming it in here. So I'm going to test that it works by uploading the default sketch, which is a which is the blink sketch, and then I'm going to be powering this buzzer. So I'm going to check my pinout. Okay, so I'm going to be doing that on pin 10. So pin 10 is this one, pin 10 and ground, and connect that to ground if I can steal another wire, pin to ground, yep, that looks about right. So this is just to check that it's receiving power properly, and if it works, this should make a buzzing sound. So I'm going to take the microchip out and put it in here. You could, if you wanted to, run a load of wires from this directly to this to program it directly. However, that's a bit of a chore and you can get wires crossed up and everything messes up. So it's just easier to pull it out and put it in here to program it. So now let's program it, programming it. Okay, so now I've got my computer that's done uploading. So I can go ahead and just, oh God, I put that in quite good. Let's take it out. Take that out of here. So now it's programmed, I could, I can theoretically just plop it back in here and it should run the blink sketch as planned. So now when I connect, I'm just gonna unplug the servo because it's, it's not being used for the moment. So now when I plug in the power, it should start beeping. So I'm, these things are really hard to plug into a breadboard. So I'm going to just be using, by, I'm just going to be doing it manually. and fingers crossed 
Okay, it's very quiet. So long story short, because the buzzer was quite quiet, I decided to try it with an LED and it works absolutely fine. So no problem there. The buzzer might have just been a dud. So here I'm just demonstrating that I'm getting two different voltages. When I show you the voltage of the whole battery pack, you can see I get about seven and a half what I um, estimated it to be. Whereas when I try it across the capacitor, I get about 3.3. .3, so perfect. The um, well, it's being powered at seven and a half, but the microchip itself is getting just 3.3, .3, which is what we want. So the only reason we want that big voltage difference is we want to be able to power the servo at a much higher voltage than the microchip. So the next thing I went to test is that the servo will actually work with an Arduino on a breadboard because it's not something I've used before. And with that voltage difference, I just wanted to make sure that it would actually work before I start soldering everything together. So I reprogrammed the microchip using the example sketch sweep in the Arduino ID. So I plugged everything and it works. If you managed to stick around this long, congratulations, because it was a bit of a ride, but yeah, stick around for the next build log. I'll make sure it's a lot more succinct, shorter, to the point, concise, etc. Uh, remember to follow me on Twitter. I am at Satonic. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them down in the comments uh, down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. And yeah, thanks for watching.